When we misuse substances, like drugs and alcohol, it can cause problems at work, school, and home. Even though we may want to stop, it can be difficult because substances change the way our brain works. They even change the way we think. Before we realize it, we may find ourselves using substances more frequently and feeling stuck. For parents and pregnant people, realizing that you might have a problem with substances can be hard. But there is hope. Fortunately, substance use disorders are common medical conditions that pregnant people and parents, like anyone else, can and do recover from. You can also have a happy, healthy baby. I started using opiates when my mother passed away in 2013. I was in a relationship with my kids' father, um, and we were kind of having some separation problems. And um, he was using opiates. I felt if I started doing opiates with him, he would stay home more with us. And I did start using. Started off with marijuana. And by the time I hit ninth grade, I was using Vicodins. You know, I sustained a long period of um, using pills all through high school and my young adult age. How I got into heroin, there had been a, a drug raid on the reservation. The cops didn't find the narcotics and uh, me and my, uh, my significant other found them. We held on to them for a really long time. And like one time, you know, we ran out of pills and I was like, should we try this? You know, you guys want to, you want to try it? And she was like, I don't know. I looked at her and I said, you know, if we try this, you know, our, our lives are never going to be the same. And it wasn't. I was depressive and anxiety, so one of the medications they gave me was Klonopin. And I went from taking it how I was prescribed to overusing and then wanting something more. Percocets, Oxycontins, those weren't enough. So then it went to heroin. I did quit for a while because I ended up pregnant with my son. For many of us, substance misuse affects all parts of our lives. And our relatives experiencing substance use disorders face many struggles. When I would wake up, that's the first thing I would want was to use opiates. Throughout the day, I would worry about how I'm gonna get money or what I'm gonna do to get high. When I was using heroin, we had just use as many times as I could a day, been in sleep for days. And then when I'd wake up, it was just, it was just, all right, what are we gonna do today to get money? I didn't have no emotions. I didn't, you know, I didn't care that my kids got took and, you know, I didn't care that I was hurting them every day. You know what I mean? You know, like I was there, but I wasn't, you know, I wasn't there. They are deprived of me being a good dad for a long time. What made me realize that I, had a problem was overdosing in front of my son. When I got up at 4.30, I realized I was in the hospital. And when I got home, I just kind of sat around for a little while, waited for eight o'clock to come, to come so I could call and make arrangements to go up to chemical health. I was very depressed, hopeless. Um, I felt like there's no reason for me to be here anymore. I went to the chemical health to get an assessment. The moment that I realized I needed help was when I survived the car fentanyl overdose. The very first phone call that I had made was up to the Red Lake Nation Chemical Health Program. And I was happy someone answered that day, or else I don't think I'd be sitting here right now. I'd probably still be out there. Recovering from drug and alcohol dependency can be a long journey, with many ups and downs. Fortunately, though, there is more hope than ever. Today, we have effective treatments that can help with recovery. For instance, Speaking with a counselor regularly can help people change behaviors related to their use. Also, taking certain medications may make the recovery process easier by decreasing cravings or blocking the high people might normally feel. I was really 
really grateful when I started Suboxone. Taking that first dose and feeling like I'm going to be okay was a relief. I knew that I wouldn't have to worry about relapsing again because of the cravings. When your body finally adapts to it, your mental health changes, your overall physical well-being changes, there's just a lot of good things that come from it. You're able to function. I did whatever I could to, um, to get sober, so I was, I was doing meetings. I was attending outpatient. I was dosing every day on a regular schedule. I was just like doing whatever I could to change my life to be sober. So once I got into the MAT program, I started outpatient groups and I did go for the full 12 weeks. I needed a lot of prevention skills and the outpatient group helped a lot. I felt like I didn't have to worry about withdrawal symptoms or cravings. I was able to be a better person, be a better mom. Healing from substance misuse often involves getting help from a wide variety of people, including health providers, counselors, social workers, cultural and spiritual supports, supportive family and friends, elders, mentors, and recovery groups. One of my favorite people to talk to was the nurse. She pointed me in, in a lot of different good directions and she listened. I was really engaged in our outpatient groups and I wanted to extend it so I can learn more and just be in that kind of setting with other sober people because I didn't know any but no one sober at the time. I think one of the main things was just reaching out to the senior counselors, you know, that have been through these things in life. And the men's healing circles, you know, you really get to talk about what you're going through in your life, and that helps, just talking. Our cultural teachings are also very powerful. They have helped many of us understand how to live well for generations. Although everyone's relationship to their culture is different, participating in traditional practices and ceremonies can be healing for many people and their families. Culture will always lead the way. Some of the cultural practices that help me are smudging, praying, rice harvesting, hunting. I just did the smudging and praying daily. It would relax me, just, okay, everything's gonna be okay. The morning meditation was also another place where we were able to use our own medicines, like sage and sweetgrass and all that. Growing up, I knew it was there. You know, I never really used it the way I use it now. I'm back to doing things that make me happy and keep me happy. Being able to have my son come and visit me at treatment in Halfway House and him seeing me happy and healthy again. I could see the spark back in his eyes that he had his He had his mom back. I'm very happy today. I love waking up knowing it's another day with my kids and my family and knowing that I'm here. I got me back, you know. <laughs> I'm back to myself again, you know, before addiction. My quality of life is really good. You know, I really love life. And that's how you say, you should wait a minute, but more to zoom you know, I love life. And, you know, that means to sincerely enjoy life, to sin sincerely devote yourself to living a good life. That's what that means. I want others that are struggling with substance use to know that there is hope and that there is a way out. There is a way to live a better life. There's help out there if you want it. And I encourage anybody who's struggling to reach out for help because help is there in some shape or form. If I knew somebody who had substance abuse issues, I would tell them that there are resources out here for you to use. To not be afraid to ask for help because there are so many people that are willing to help. If you are worried that you or someone you love might be dependent on substances, you're not alone. There are many people and treatments that can help. 
A good first step is to talk with a health provider or staff person at your local substance use treatment facility, even if you feel nervous. They can help you decide what treatments are best for you, your baby, and your family. They can also connect you with other important services and support in your community. And remember, it's okay to struggle as you work toward making a better life. We are all learning different life skills to be happier and healthier people. As your journey continues, so will your understanding of how to care for yourself and your family.